Mom and Dad, are you ready? Today's word is stupendous. You need some encouragement. Stupendous marriage encouragement. You need some inspiration. Take that energy you're putting into those things and put them in the things that are really important, like the time with your kids and your job and the things that you're really wanting to be better at. Yeah, going from overwhelmed to just whelmed. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You're listening to the Stupendous Marriage Show with our friends Stu and Lisa Gray. Oh, I love that word. Stupendous. The Stupendous Marriage Show. Hey there. Welcome to the Stupendous Marriage Show. I'm Stu Gray. Hey, I'm Lisa Gray. How are you, babe? How's things? How's life? How's love and life and the pursuit of happiness? <laughs> How many coffees have you had? Just one, surprisingly. Okay. But you did go work out. I did. And I have blisters on the bottom of my feet. I know. It's yeah. lovely. Why? I keep reading and hearing, let's be healthy. Let's be wonderful. And everybody has to do 10,000 steps a day to be healthy. Because 10,000 steps a day is just like a baseline for health. And so I walked for an hour on a treadmill <laughs> and I only got to like... 6,500, 7,000 steps. I'm like, how do people take 10,000 steps a day? How is this possible? Obviously, they have nothing else to do with their life than walk. I, I don't know. But, I mean, 7,000 steps is a lot in one hour. Yeah, oh, I know, yeah. I guess I had the rest of the day to, like, do the other 3,000. Right. Well, I think... But see, I work at a computer. Right. I sit at a computer. I'm not going to walk for 3,000 more steps probably the rest of the day unless I go shop. Well, and that's the thing. You have to be intentional. You know, yeah. people say like when you're parking in the garage, don't get the closest bike. Park get the far away. away. Right. Extra and, steps. Right, right. And walk in. It. But I think that your steps, right, of an hour straight, strategically, probably quicker than you normally would walk, are worth more than just the steps that were recorded. See what I'm saying? Like, because well, when I walk in the store, I'm not like walking briskly. You know, I'm walking. I'm That's being super not lazy true. Walking. I've seen you walk through stores. Well, I know exactly what I want. <laughs> let's go get it. <laughs> let's go. Oh, let's go buy some wood for a wood wall. Oh, shall we? Dun, 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 dun. No. What are you talking about? That's what we've been doing over the past week or so is building an artsy fartsy wood wall in this little alcove we have in our front room. And actually, it looks pretty cool. Yes. yes it looks it pretty cool. And that was something fun that we did over the holidays. We've never fun. never really done that before. Fun's a relative word. It is a relative word. But, you know, the cool thing is, is now every time we look at that wall, we're going to remember that we did it over Christmas break. We're going to remember that we all took part and did something and did different things with it. And it's ours. And I've never thought about doing that over the holidays. Like, I'm an experienced person, and we've talked about that before. And I, I love to go ice skating or doing this, but I never thought about a project because sure. we're yeah. not project or haven't been project people. Yeah. Can be so valuable because I really enjoyed the time we spent together when we were working on it or when you would be working on it, we'd talk about it and, hey, how's it going? And I would do something and you'd be like, oh, cool. That looks great. Mm -hmm. and, I enjoyed uh, all the time we had the wood on the floor and I kept saying, <laughs> don't walk on the wood. It's going to break. Don't walk on the wood. It's going to break. Don't. Will you just walk around? Now, see, now you're just doing it to spite me. See, <laughs> now you're going to break all of the wood before it goes on the wall. And what are we going to be able to do? Are you going to go buy more wood? I, I enjoyed that part. So funny. So funny. Hey, there are so many comments I can make. Like, we built a wall over the Christmas holidays. Our government couldn't get that done. Oh, I see. No. That's just a joke. Dun, dun, I dun. didn't want to go there. But okay. <laughs> um, Ours was only 12 feet long. So <laughs> I think they have a little further to go than we do. But oh, We're not a political show, so we're not going there. <laughs> yes, thank you. Reality is, yes, it's hard. Yeah. But if your family, if you're having a hard time, go camping together. Like, go do right. something hard together. And that doesn't seem like it would make sense, but it does because later on you remember that you got through it together and you have that like, oh, remember that time we did that thing, you know, moment with each other and you can reconnect, especially if it's not something not to do with your marriage or with your family structure. You know, it's not that you're going somewhere and dealing with just with the in-laws. It's you go camping and it rains on you and you all have to figure out where to sleep sure. and there's no emotional attachment to it. It was just difficult in the moment and for me like now I won't remember those times about the wall when I look at them I'm not going to remember 
the times that I was griping at you, which I was because you oh, kept walking on it. I will. Ugh. But I will good remember. Memories. Yeah, I will remember the good ones. I will remember like, oh, how cool is it that we went, hey, we want to do this and we worked hard and we made it happen and we're not quite done with it yet, but we're almost done. And just to know that it was something, it's ours that we did together and it's not store bought. It was all custom done and it's just really cool. Yeah, it is cool. We got an email coming up. We're glad you're here today. This week, the Stupendous Marriage Show is powered by the Lake Tahoe Couples Getaway. It's an amazing opportunity for you and your spouse to get a little time by yourself together to hang out in a beautiful resort in Lake Tahoe. Yeah, you get to go for four days, three nights, and it's on the waterfront resort located in Tahoe. I think it's the only waterfront resort in that area. Mark Gunger will be there from Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. Lots of great music and worship with Brandon Heath and Chris August. While you're there, you'll get to do lots of fun activities like going ice skating together, hiking, skiing, even ballroom dancing. So if you are a Stupendous Marriage Show listener, and you are, now through Valentine's Day 2019, if you're listening to this in the future, I'm sorry, (laughs) you'll receive $100 off the retreat. Visit the website, tahocouplesgetaway.com slash stupendous. The retreat starts at just $499 a person, which is a great price for a marriage retreat. So with that $100 discount, man, it makes it so affordable. TahoeCouplesGetaway.com slash stupendous for all the details. Okay, so here's our email today. You can send us yours on air at stupendousmarriage.com. You can also text us a question now, 1-615-592-1060. And uh, that way, if you've just got something going through your head or you're listening to the show right now and, oh, this is going on, I can text them, one 592 1060 So here we go. My husband and I have been married for a year and a half, and I'm terrified that we're headed for divorce. We have a lot of stress in our lives. I have a seven-year-old from a previous relationship who has ADHD and is always in trouble. We both work. We have a large home, which requires constant upkeep. I do not like his family, and worst of all, we have a seven-month-old who sleeps like a newborn. I feel like we are always so stressed out, have no time for each other, and are always arguing. I know a big part of the problem is my inability to handle stress and sleep deprivation. Do you have any advice for us to try to save our marriage? Please help. I've listened to your show for months now and can only pray my husband and I are one day as close as you two. Well, just know the closeness that you and I have is great, but we have hard days too. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? We have hard seasons. Right. Yeah, we have seasons where we're going, you know, we have a teenager and we have just different things yeah. that we're dealing with. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I love the fact that she recognizes her responsibility in it. That she feels like a big part of what's going on is because of the way she's handling stress and sleep mm-hmm. deprivation. So, I mean, the first thing is obviously figure those things out. Like how do you look at things differently. Do you go to the doctor and get something to be able to help you sleep? Like, do y'all switch schedules around so that you can sleep a little bit more and mm-hmm. he might be able to take a shift or right. whatever the case may be. If you're nursing, I, th- I know that may not be possible. Well, but... we know moms need more sleep than husbands and fathers a lot of times. that I don't know where that study came out, but I just I remember reading that, that moms and wives actually need more sleep. Amen. So, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I can find that, I'll link to it in Thank our show you. notes. <laughs> just so you can pass that off. Yeah. It may be useful, actually, to see that, hey, you probably do need need more sleep in this season. Not even to do just with a newborn, but just in general. So I think if you if there's any way you can take a pause, and what I mean by that is if there's any way you can unplug for even like one night, one afternoon, you guys together, come up with a game plan. You know, you mentioned having a big house. Maybe you need to downsize your house. Maybe you need to think about hiring people to help with the house. I mean, I just had that conversation with a friend the other day who is just at her wits end because her husband is on the road and not around to help a whole bunch. And she is just feeling so, not even just overwhelmed, but just feeling like she's not doing a good job at anything she does because she's doing so many things. And I said to her, what is it when you list out your responsibilities and the things that you handle, what things can you give away? What things that you do can you hire somebody to do instead? Mm -hmm. And 
she was like, oh, yeah, you know, I used to have somebody clean the house and that was great. And mm. I used to have somebody help with dinners. Oh, maybe I should think about doing that again. And it's like those things are not the important things. Right. So take those off your plate so that you can then take that energy you're putting into those things and put them into things that are really important, like the time with your kids and your job and the things that you're really wanting to be better at. Yeah. Going from overwhelmed to just whelmed. Right. <laughs> yeah. She actually gave a list here of things to think about, which is kind of cool. In this email, you could go back and, and look at these things and when you have a clear head after you've slept a little bit. But um, the first thing you said was talking about your child from a previous relationship and ADHD. So have you talked with your spouse about your parenting together mm, yeah, and what that looks like. Does he feel like dad? Does he feel like someone who can speak into your child's life and your parenting styles? Are they the same? Are they different? I mean, again, having these conversations hopefully would help you move to a place where you don't feel like that is such a big stress. You know, the next thing is work. Can you adjust schedules? You didn't say where you work, when you work, how you work. Are you working out of the house? Are you working in the house? Working out of the house, if it's more of a traditional schedule, is harder to get around. Mm -hmm. But if you do work for yourself, I mean, you can think about adjusting your schedule, adjusting your time. I mean, even places that you go to work, if you can adjust schedules or ask for extra time or differences in, I don't know what your work is, mm -hmm. so that was not specific, but thinking about how to attack that differently or ask for some grace from you know, your workplace right. or figuring out how to shuffle some of your work to different times so you're able to adjust a little bit and not feel as overwhelmed. You already talked about the home. Talking about his family a bit, I don't know why that was on this list. That almost to me seems yeah. like it wasn't quite related, but obviously it's on your heart. So it's probably because they've been around a lot with the newborn. Right, of course, yeah. And, <clears throat> well, and he's not a newborn, right, you know, right. so he's yeah, seven sure. months old, so yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. they've been around a lot more during the seven months. Yeah. Who, and it's um, stressing, it's adding stress. Yeah, absolutely. So... Grace there. If it's getting to a point where they don't need to be around as much, maybe you're coming to the end of that season where they have to be in your hair as much as they have been previously, and there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So that's yeah. a blessing. But you got to think about why you said you don't like them. What in them is a mirror to what you don't like in you? A lot mm. of times somebody gets on your nerves because that's a thing right. you haven't dealt with or you don't want to deal with. Or they're or you like you. Yeah, or you yeah. don't like in yourself. But, I mean, sometimes people are overbearing or sometimes they're not helping enough. I, I don't know what it is. So there could be varying levels here. So really thinking through what are those things that are really bothering you mm -hmm. before you just jump to, I just don't like them. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time to set some boundaries. Maybe there are some boundaries. Maybe, And again, we don't have a lot of information about why that relationship bothers you. But I also, when I read it, I the two things that I thought when I read it were she's really answering her own question. If she stops and looks at her email, sure. in her heart, she may not realize it, but the things that she listed out are the areas and in, in the things that she probably needs to think about and focus on. Yeah. And then that also stood out to me of why the in-laws came up mm -hmm. and because it kind of didn't fit with the rest of it. So really just stopping and thinking about that, I think, would be a great way to really try to figure out maybe it's something you're not even conscious of, of why it's bothering you. Anytime you've got a kiddo with a disability, with something that is causing them to have some behavior issues, that adds stress. That adds stress oh, to yeah. you. It adds stress to your marriage. And especially if it's not, he's not the dad, right? And, and maybe he, the dad is still around and it's like, oh my gosh, so I completely understand. <laughs> and that's not something you can necessarily change, you know. Know, you've got the sure. kid and you've, you've got that issue. So it's really, I, I go back to thinking like, make a list, read your own email and maybe even some of the things you almost put in the email and you decided not to make your own list. These are the 10 things I do in a day, a week that are stressful, right? What things can be modified? 
obviously, you're still going to be a mom to an infant and a seven-year-old. So that's not going to change. Maybe you hire a nanny. Maybe you hire somebody to come in and help in the evenings so that when your seven-year-old is being demanding and so that so as a seven-month-old, you have somebody else to come help if your husband can't be around. What is it that you can change about the situation? And, and you, you know, your main question was, do you have any advice for us to try to save our marriage? And that's really it. Just take a pause together and go, okay, we're a year and a half into this marriage. This is where our world is. And obviously, we can't sustain this. So what do we do? How do we work together to figure out changes that we can put into place? It might be him doing more of the grocery shopping. It might be whatever the case may be to get to a place to where it may still be stressful, but you guys are at least working together to conquer it instead of you feel like all you're doing is arguing. That is the core of what we believe, and that is standing side by side and putting the thing that you're battling out in front of you. So you are moving in step with your spouse together towards a solution, not battling each other with that thing between you. And if you can really look at that thing facing the same direction with your spouse and figure out... How do we deal with the seven-year-old? How do we deal with the seven-month-old? What do we do with the in-laws? What do we do with work? And all of those things. And if you can link arms and move through those things together, it's not going to be easy. But you will be moving together to knock those things out. And you can save your marriage. You will feel like you're you know, making progress together as a couple and growing in your marriage together. You know, you guys are becoming one flesh in your marriage. That's what the Bible says we become, oneness. So you have to remember you and your spouse working together as one Mm -hmm. towards those things that come against you. We really hope that that helps. When you listen to the show and you start processing through that, let us know how it goes. Update us. You can email us back. Of course, email us on air at stupendousmarriage.com. And if you are listening right now and you've gone through this season of life and you have input for this other listener, man, we would love to hear from you as well. Just send us a message referencing the show and we will definitely forward that on to them. Texting is fun. 1-615-592-1060. If you've got a question or a response, we would love to hear from you. And we will talk to you next time. See ya. Yeah. Like the show? Like the show. Yeehaw. Share the podcast. Tell, tell another couple. Hold on. Hold up. Hello. My head's kind of cut Hello. Off. Can you move it this way a little bit? Can you hear me? Na, 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 na. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you're like two different people. Like you're one person when the camera's on and thunder. one person when the thunder. <laughs> Lightning and the thunder. Thunder. Okay. Thunder. 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 No more listening to that song before the show. It's a great song. You can also text us a question. Question. Okay, let's start over. Yeah. Like the show? Like the show? Share the podcast. Tell, tell, tell your married friends. Yeah.